So hello everybody and thank you for coming to SCAN today. You all know why I'm here, it's quite obvious from my t-shirt that obviously I'm going to talk a bit about the GTX 580, our brand new graphics cards. So 2010 has been an absolutely fantastic year for gaming. I'm sure you'll all agree that, that, that this has been a year where the PC has really hit back against consoles. It's, it's that kind of special year where the PC really pulls ahead of what's available on the Xbox, on the PS3. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. Obviously, the console is now quite a long life cycle, but we really are seeing um, PC gaming getting quite special. So I'm sure many of you might have read about 480 or actually have a GTX 480. So Fermi as an architecture, which is what our chip was based on, was a fantastic architecture. It's super fast. It had a, a couple of tiny issues, perhaps, at the beginning. One of which was the GTX 480 was pretty loud and also it pumped out a lot of heat. So when we sat down and decided what are we going to do as a follow-up to 580, we thought, do you know what, we have to make sure we make a card that's even faster, that's quiet, and that is, is cool to run as well. So the, the 580 is a full 512 CUDA cord enabled part. Um, it's running at 772 standard clock speeds. What this all means is you have a card that is on average 30% faster than a GTX 480. It's by far the fastest DirectX 11 graphics card on the market right now. So how did we manage that? We did a few key things. We designed it for performance per watt. We've got some architectural enhancements. So just based on what we did with the chip itself, 580 is about 15% faster than a GTX 480. So it really is a, a, a brand new chip in that respect. And of course, we have more geometry. So I'm sure you've all heard about tessellation, and that's a way of adding more and more triangle detail to models by simply using a very simple shading technique called displacement mapping. If you imagine, so say, say, say if you take me as an example. If you take like a human body made me out of like wooden blocks and then had a shaded map that had all the details of my face in there, well, our graphics card does is it takes all of that, all of that detail and it pumps out the triangles to create all of the, all of the detail you see in game. It's far more realistic than the current, than, than current ways of doing things. It's far, it's far easier to do some unique things as well. So game developers absolutely love it because it gives them more realistic characters, more realistic game worlds as well. And, and above all else, it's about making you feel more in the game. So we're far, far quieter. So GTX 580 is our first card to have a new vapor chamber cooling solution. And what that is, it's a special cooling, um, a cooling solution in the card itself. And what it does, as the card gets hot, that liquid evaporates, takes all the heat with it, condenses, and then goes back down towards the GPU. You get maximum heat output, so you have a really cool, quiet card. It's actually the quietest card we've made for four years in terms of high end. And it's by far the quietest high end, uh, like highest end card available on the market now. So what else have we enhanced? You've got better power monitoring. So now instead of just looking at the temperature of the GPU itself, we also look at the actual power that goes into the chip, which means we have a much better fan control. We have much better power monitoring features. Um, of course, we have faster clocks and more cores, which means you basically have one of the best GPUs available on the planet right now. I'm now going to show you a couple of demonstrations of some key demos that we have that will enable you to see just how powerful it is. Um, you, you did all see there two billion triangles per second. That's just how many triangles this card can draw. To give you an idea of how far we've come, about six, seven years ago, we were talking about a few several million triangles per second. So it, it, it's massively increased over the past half decade. So this is a small demo called Endless City. It's very Blade Runner-ish. It's in 3D, so make sure you're wearing your 3D specs. So what's important to realize about this game is that it's not a set cityscape. This is completely done on the fly. Every time you load the game up, the city will be different. And, what's, and that means that as Rich flies through the city, it will never end. The, the graphics card will carry on drawing more and more buildings and make it more and more spectacular. If we actually switch to the split screen mode, what you're seeing here is just how much shading is being applied to the city. This is all done using tessellation. So if Rich just turns off tessellation for a moment, 
You'll see the actual building models are extremely simple. So they're, they're very easy for, for designers to make. And if we turn tessellation back on, you'll see just how much detail is being produced purely by the, the displacement map. If we look at this in wireframe mode, it's a hell of a lot of triangles. So as Rich now moves around, you'll see that we're getting close to 2 billion on screen at any one time. This is massively in excess of any game that's available right now. So it really shows you how future-proof this card is. Um, for developers, it's super exciting. The other nice thing about this demo in particular is that you can see how much shading is just added on the fly. So Rich, you go to wireframe mode quickly, and what we'll see is as you move closer to these gargoyles here, for example, you'll see, um, you'll see more and more triangles brought in as the closer you get, and that's the power of tessellation. What you don't have is that kind of like um, pop-in feeling that you may, you may have seen in many games right now, that, that as you go and, get, what, go and see a character, you kind of see a low detail version, I'm quite close, a bit more detail, and I'm really close up a high detail model. With tessellation, it completely smoothly trans transits in. And that means you can do stuff that, that's very, 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 very incredible, very, very realistic, and not dependent on having a set animation. The next demo I'm going to show you is called Aliens vs Triangles. Um, as its name suggests, it stars our little alien man who internally we call Test Man. You'll see a character that has probably, I think it's five or six different displacement maps and they can all, they can all be transitioned smoothly. So you can go from his like metal skeleton to um, bioskeleton to flesh to skin to his armor. So this, this is just him normally. As you can see, he's walking around quite happily, but he's a, he's like a, he's a pretty hard alien. So Rich has to add some armor to him. And what's nice about this is as Rich clicks on different parts of the alien, that's the one, that the armor will start to, start to be made exactly where Rich is clicking and slowly spread out procedurally. So it, there's no canned animation. It's different every time and it means that it looks far more realistic. This is using a fair amount of triangles, as Rich can see here. Um, there's quite a few going on. If you um, then zoom out, so this alien is now pretty scary, so I think the, the only nice thing to do is to start killing him. So let's give him a good laser beam in the head. And what you'll see here is that his flesh begins to rot away. And if we go to wireframe mode, you'll, yeah, you actually see it there. So. <clears throat> Thanks to tessellation, you can actually see the, fret, the flesh rotting away, the skin blistering. If you look, if I just go down here, if you look at his arms here, the flesh slowly begins to move away. And that's the nice thing. Before, all that would have happened is the game would have, the game would have said, I've been shot in the arm, therefore make my arm go floppy or make my arm fall off or something similar. Whereas now, depending on exactly where Rich shoots the alien, it's at a particular spot that the injury begins from. Maybe give him a virus. So, if you just go back to his, oh, there they are, so it's growing in there now. So what, what you'll see here is Rich has given him a virus here. The virus will slowly spread throughout his entire body. And so Rich began it on his head. You'll see it starts spreading down into his shoulders. As it starts spreading into one shoulder, he'll start to hunch over, start limping. And that's a nice thing. It all depends entirely on where you click to have the virus begin spreading. So both, both Endless City and Test Man will be available free to download from my website. Um, if you do buy a card, I strongly recommend having a play around because it really is fantastic. So now we'll very quickly show you a real game that's already out. You may have heard of it, Call of Duty Black Ops. It came out on Tuesday. Um, it's a, it's a particularly great game, especially because it's one of the first games that has been made from the very beginning to be in full 3D. And we have our, our little Call of Duty expert here that will run you through the game. So one nice thing to notice is that all the menus, all the cutscenes, it's all in 3D. 